Ishne, do we not have a cart? Um, I just reached out to Annette. Should we use Otter AI until the cart person shows up? Yes, we can do that. Welcome everyone. We're going to start in about one minute. We're just getting the cart figured out. Looks like it's enabled the captioning. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Let's go ahead and get started, and then hopefully the actual captioner will join us. But if not, we have Otter. Uh, welcome, everyone. My name is Amy Stirk, and I'm from Michigan Disability Rights Coalition, and we're excited to have you join us today for AT for Parenting. Um, we do expect a CART captioner to show up, but in the meantime, if you would like to view the captions, um, you can select the CC on your screen and show subtitles and you should be able to see the captions. And then we do have ASL interpreters, uh, interpreting provided live as well. Um, we are live on Facebook and then in Zoom. Um, if you see us on Facebook um, and would like to join uh, so that you have the captions and easier access to interpreters, there is a um, link so that you can go and join us on Zoom and we welcome you on Zoom. Wanted to introduce ourselves first. Um, again, my name is Amy Stirk. Uh, my pronouns are she, her, and hers. And I am a parent of two live children. Um, I have disabilities and my children have disabilities. And the picture on the slide is of me and um, my kiddos. Um, and we're wearing um, actually rainbow pride uh, clothing. Um, I am also the co-director of the Michigan Assistive Technology Program, um, and my passion is AT for community living. Um, I use AT myself every day, um, and I use AT as a parent and as a person with a disability. Ajene, would you like to introduce yourself to? Yes, thank you, Amy. Um, my name is Ajene Thomas, and my pronouns are she, her, hers, and I am a parent um, that identifies as a parent with a disability. And um, I am the Youth Assistive Technology Specialist at Michigan Disability Rights Coalition. Um, and in the picture is me and my two kiddos to um, Destin and Journey. <laughs> and um, today I am wearing a white blouse and uh, my hair is up in a ponytail. Oh, thanks. I forgot to do my visual description today, too. Um, I am a white woman with gray and dark brown hair, um, and I'm wearing a black and red and blue v-neck shirt. And we will do um, descriptions of the pictures and um, videos as, and things as we go along. Um, just a couple of things about questions and housekeeping. We really are open um, to questions throughout today. So if you want to unmute yourself and ask a question, or if you want to type it in the chat, um, our chat moderator is ill today. So Asian A and I are going to be presenting and chat moderating. So please give us a little bit of, um, of uh, grace with that. Um, I, I do think if you can unmute, if that's accessible to you and ask the question, um, that would be easier for us as we present and chat moderate at the same time. Um, but we welcome your questions and your input. Um, we as people with disabilities have lots of um, information to offer each other about what works and what's useful and what resources are available. Um, and many of our pictures today, well, actually that's not true anymore. Uh, we're from the Brandeis University. Um, there's a National Research Center for Parents with Disabilities. I do recommend that website and um, check out the pictures on there. Um, the visual picture on this slide is of a light bulb 
um, with a background of a chalk outline of an idea bubble. Ajne, do you want to talk about our mission? Yes. Um, so Michigan Disability Rights Coalition, um, our mission is that we cultivate disability pride and strengthen the disability movement by recognizing disability as a natural and beautiful part of human diversity while collaborating to dismantle all forms of oppression. Thanks, Ajne. I saw in the chat, uh, Karen Durr said that I have a disability too. So welcome. Welcome. And glad you joined us again. <laughs> a little bit about Michigan Assistive Technology Program. Um, we are a federally funded program and there are assistive technology programs in all of the states and territories um, in the nation. Um, and we provide access to AT information and services for people in Michigan. Um, and our trainings actually now can be nationwide or, or across the world. Um, we are by people with disabilities and for people with disabilities. That means our staff are people with disabilities ourselves, and we use assistive technology. Um, and we provide demonstrations and loans of devices and trainings like this. Um, so many of the devices that we're going to talk about today on a about AT for parenting are available from our program for you to borrow and see if they work for you. Um, especially some of the more expensive items really might want to try them before um, you buy them yourself um, so that you know if they work for your body or your home or your baby or child. Um, I, I know myself, I've found it really useful to try things um, and learn that either they do work or they don't work and that saves me from buying things that don't work and it helps me find things that do work. If you would like to um, try out any of these devices, our 800 number is 800-578-0280. And you can also find us on the web at mymdrc.org slash assistive hyphen tech hyphen program. And the um, picture here is of the MATP logo, which is um, has a light bulb with two little green leaves coming out of it. So what is AT? Assistive technology or AT is any item, piece of equipment, software, or app that is used to help people with disabilities, including older adults, do what they want to do. So as Amy mentioned, um, we both have disabilities and we use AT in our daily lives. Um, and um, technology can also make things easier for everyone. For people with disabilities, AT opens up possibilities. And that's what our program is about, is about getting people the access to different AT and um, being able to utilize those to possibly have an option on if those work for you or they don't work for you. And our captioner has joined us. So if you would like to, um... Uh, see the live cart captioning, um, they should be on the bottom of the screen if you hit the CC button, um, or there's also a link in the chat for um, the stream player. Wanted to talk some specifically about parenting with a disability and then AT for parenting with a disability. Um, as people with disabilities, we have a lot to offer. As parents, we are creative. We find ways to do things um, that work and we share them. Um, I was just looking at the Disabled Parenting Project, which is entirely people with disabilities that are parents um, sharing and supporting other parents with disabilities. We are creative and we have to be creative in our everyday lives. We also value inter interdependence, which means we're in this together and we build community around ourselves and our children, and we see the gifts and values in each individual. And then we teach and model for our children disability pride and justice. I am a parent with a disability and my children are people with disabilities. So I think that having me as a parent helps them um, learn about and develop pride in themselves. Um, wanted to see who else is in the room today, like what brings you today? Why are you interested in AT for parenting with a disability? So if you're willing to either unmute and share or type in the chat, we'd love to hear um, who is with us today. Well, I can go. Um, sure. <laughs> 
My name is Carrie Gerdeman. I am the Recreation and Health Services Director at Display Network Eastern Michigan, and I am a recreational therapist and I am a parent. So I am interested in uh, assistive technology, personally awesome. and professionally. Thanks, Carrie. Thank you. Anyone else? like to share why you're here. When we had one person before share their person with a disability. Okay. Well, we can move on. Um, feel free to jump in and share some more too. Wanted to share some more quotes about parenting with a disability. Um, this is from a project that Brandeis uh, Resource Center for People with Disability or Parenting with a Disability um, had a tweet on Mother's Day a number of years ago. Um, and I just thought these were useful and thoughtful quotes about parenting with a disability. Uh, my kindergartner has learned so much about empathy. He has a deep understanding that everyone brings different strengths. It's made my it's made my kids more adaptive and flexible, skills that are going to serve them well in life. Also sharing a disability with my children, I've been able to expose them to positivity about their disability. I think seeing moms accommodate destigmatizes disability for kids. Kids of disabled moms appreciate diversity and welcome differences. And these are all tweets from Brandeis um, Mother's Day experience. And um, they did this just for Mother's Day, but certainly there are parents of all genders uh, with disabilities. So we went over some about um, what assistive technology is, and then we're talking about parenting with a disability. Um, a couple more words on AT for parenting. Um, Many parents with disabilities reported they needed more assistive technology when their kids were babies. So we are focusing a lot in this presentation on more AT for babies and young children. Um, that as children got older, um, less AT was needed, both because kids could do maybe some more things themselves and because, um, yeah, more probably because kids could do some of the things for themselves that you really, when you're parenting a newborn, you're doing every single thing for them. Um, and some of the creative things parents with disabilities do are only safe when the parent or another adult is there watching and attending. So we're going to talk about um, some seating devices, things like that. Um, you still have to really practice um, thoughtful, safe parenting. Um, you can't leave babies alone in a lot of the different um, things that help with seating and positioning, like strollers, bumbo seats, and swings. So these are devices that we use as AT, but they are not um, just leave a, a child in them kinds of things. As we go along today, um, we will be talking about a lot of different devices. Um, and I'm going to put the um, link to our resource guide in the chat if you want to follow along that way as we kind of talk about the different devices. Thanks, Ajane. That'll give you an idea of where you can purchase them, how much they cost. A lot of the links might be to Amazon. That's not because we specifically promote Amazon, just because it's easy to have them all um, in one place, but there's some other um, vendors for devices too. So a little bit about pregnancy AT. Um, some of the devices that I found most useful when I were, was pregnant um, and some of my friends and colleagues, um, a shower chair, um, being able to sit down to shower and use a handheld shower was really helpful to me. Um, I had trouble with shortness of breath when I was pregnant. Um, if you already use a wheelchair or power chair, being able to transfer to a shower chair when you're pregnant is safely super important. Um, also pictured here is a dressing stick. Uh, dressing sticks can help you get on and off your clothes. The picture here is of a person pushing their sock off with a dressing stick. It can be really difficult to reach around your belly when you're pregnant um, and uncomfortable. So having stuff like a dressing stick or a reacher uh, can be really helpful. I also um, looked for accessible maternity clothes and size inclusive options. 
Um, I am a person of size. I'm part of some parenting, um, fat positive parenting um, groups on Facebook. Um, there are not a lot of options for maternity clothes for people of size. Um, there are not a lot of options for accessible maternity clothes, but I did find um, that really stretchy materials, um, long, long-ish addresses um, that were stretchy were more accessible to me. Um, I also found that online communities and other uh, places to seek out social support were really helpful when encountering medical bias, um, bias against people with disabilities having um, children, um, bias against people of size having children. Um, and also due to my disabilities, I had multiple losses before I had my children. Um, and there are great um, resources online for infertility communities and loss supports communities. I personally really appreciated um, the pregnancy after loss uh, Facebook groups. Ajne, do you have anything you want to add to these? Or Yeah, um, when I was pregnant, um, I had a lot of um, issues with just getting in and out of the car um, due to my um, bone being separated. <laughs> so I actually had to use a belt to lift up my belly and um, to help support my back. So there's also pregnancy belts that can kind of help um, with any like back strain and um, to help lift up your belly. Yeah. Causing pain. Yeah. Ajna, you want to share some more hacks? Yeah, so some of the things um, that we have to do um, is we have to sometimes create our own hacks or just kind of just do things that work for us with assistive technology. It doesn't have to be something that you purchase, something really fancy. Um, we have to do our do-it-yourself DIY project sometimes to kind of fit our needs and our baby's needs. Um, some of the parenting hacks that we um, came across as we were talking to some some mothers and um, reading tweets on social media um, were that some, I gave up changing tables and changed my kids on the floor, um, put bells on shoes when I'm out to hear my children. This way I can follow them for a parent that may have low vision. Um, our house is dual adapted most easy things to make our kids as independent as possible and us. Um, ditch the crib, put the mattress on the floor. <laughs> when when daughter was a baby, floor time was done from the bed easier, which was easier for me to rise from. Um, baby stage stuff for this, wheelchair using mom, um, arms reach co-sleeper, Lotus family zip down travel kit crib, lap baby, baby Catan, um, those type of um, devices that are kind of lower arms reach, um, easy to get to if you're using a wheelchair. Um, I bought a, another mom said I bought a specific type of car based on what I could get a baby carrier in and out of. Um, I use my wheelchair footrest as a car seat holder stroller. And also um, the one product that helped me persist was my breast friend. So we're gonna talk about a couple of different devices that some of those moms um, gave us as their own parenting hacks that were useful to them. And these were tips from Mother's Day Parenting with a Disability Twitter chat hosted by the, help me out, Amy. Brandeis. Brandeis, Brandeis. okay, University. <laughs> Thank you. And the picture on this slide is of a dad who uses a wheelchair blowing bubbles with uh, one of his kiddos chasing the bubbles. <laughs> so to start off, um, with um, some more about feeding, which um, the My Breast Friend is actually in the middle of the slide here that was mentioned in the Twitter, um, in the Twitter uh, day, um, Mother's Day tweets. Um, that is a pillow that's helpful for breastfeeding, but bottle feeding too. And it, um, in the picture here, you can see there are um, clips to secure it around your waist. Um, they have it so that it does expand to um, accommodate, um, uh, I could fit into it and I am a person of size. Um, it can really help. I have trouble with chronic upper back pain and um, severe arthritis in my shoulders. So it can help with propping a baby to feed a baby, um, getting it in the right position if you breastfeed. Um, it does, I have um, 
large breasts that can help with positioning a baby with large breasts. Although I bottle fed um, my babies, but the my breast friend did help um, still with positioning, especially with um, shoulder pain. Um, there are lots of options too for breast pumps. If you choose to um, pump, I exclusively pumped for my kiddos. Um, there's a picture here um, in the bottom left corner of a woman with hands free um, pumps. And there are, um, there's a link to that. Um, there are a lot of breastfeeding support communities online that um, you could connect with and check out options for if you are looking at pumps that might um, be easiest for you to use. Um, there's also the woman in the picture also has a nurse nursing bra on. I know uh, for me with my body size and uh, the way my body works, I just took bras and cup holes in them to put my breast pump things through. Um, finding bras that fit me and my size was complicated. So it was easier I could not find any that were um, breast pump friendly or breast feeding friendly. So I just um, cut them apart myself. Um, also picked, pictured here as a baby Breeza, which is a machine that will mix uh, formula for you and heat up the formula. Um, you do need to do some checking on those. I did have some recalls because they were not mixing the formula in the right ratios for, so children were being underfed, um, but there are options and you can do some um, research and um, baby safety and things and make sure you're getting a brand that correctly dispenses the formula and water ratio correctly. But I also have pictured here um, a Uccello safety kettle. So this is an easier way of dispensing warm water. Um, it has a picture with a teacup, but you could certainly put a baby bottle under there. Um, you don't have to heat all the way to boiling, but it can make pouring water, um, especially if you have arm or hand strength um, disabilities, um, easier into a bottle. Then we do have a picture of a mom sitting in a wheelchair breastfeeding um, one of her kids. Um, some of the mothers we spoke to um, did not have the physical strength to hold their babies long enough to breastfeed, while others were unable to find a position that worked for them. So um, some mothers chose to pump because that was easier to do that and then um, have others help them feed using a bottle. Um, so look at what looks, what works for you, um, what works for your baby. Um, our coworker Kelly, uh, who is a person with a vision impairment, said that um, she used full cover bibs to help contain food messes and self speeding spoons, and that her son learned to bring his mouth to the spoon she was holding, as opposed to her trying to find his mouth um, with her spoon. Um, she said, no matter what, it's very messy, so keep a damp washcloth nearby. Excellent. And the next slide um, pretty much talks about uh, the different feeding options, um, magnetic bibs, adjustable height, height chairs, um, silicone placemats to pretty much assist when we're making those mess while feeding the baby. I would, this Boone food dispensing spoon that's in the picture looks really cool to me. And I would really actually, if I had another kiddo, I would give that a try. Um, and my kids did use the AXO uh, bib that's pictured here. Um, and it does really catch quite a bit. And it's nice because it has a Velcro closure as opposed to snaps, which are really hard to do um, with yes. any difficulty with finding. I wish I would have known about the magnetic bib just because even with kids and their hair getting stuck in the velcro that oh, was always like a big yeah. thing with, with my kids like and so the magnetic can be dual purpose with that to avoid that the catching on clothes and hair and then also just um to easier to snap in place speaking of magnetic those are my favorite clothes there's a picture on this um <laughs> slide of the magnetic me. I wish they had them for bigger kids, but when my son, who is older, was little, we just had one um, magnetic me outfit. And um, when the magnets on these outfits are so strong that 
if the fabric gets close to each other, it just closes right up. I had such trouble with matching up. Um, both of my kids had really significant reflux um, and did not like to be changed. So matching up snapping outfits was really a pain. Um, when my daughter was born a year after my son, I asked for some magnetic me outfits um, and just um, putting the clothes on her and then getting the fabric near each other, it just like all connect up and um, zippers I think are easier too than snaps, but like I loved magnetic me. Sorry, Asian, I'm talking about <laughs> stuff that you. <laughs> no, that's perfectly fine. Thank you for the input because I, I haven't used those with my kids. So um, the magnetic me, I really wish I would have had those because the snaps and the zippers, um, all of that was when you have, especially when they start moving around more and get, you know, wiggling and it's just hard to try to get them changed, get them dressed. Um, and another tip was that the zippers are better than snaps. Um, we do have a device that can pull the zipper for you. Um, and then it's also a button loop device to help and assist with um, putting together, putting your buttons together. Um, another tip was that two piece outfits can be easier than one piece outfits. Um, and then to use booties instead of the baby socks. So baby socks are tiny, hard to um, grip and put over your baby's foot. If just kind of ditch those and use the baby, the baby booties, um, those just slip right on and they stay on. Um, some more um, tips that Kelly, another AT specialist, um, she has low vision um, and she gave a lot of different tips on dressing and changing to organize the clothes by age in the drawers um, and then using a Colorino color ID. It's a talking identifier. Um, that is the image in the top left. Um, it's It pretty much is a, a reader, so we'll read the color and it will tell you um, what color it is and then it helps you identify um, how you label those items. Um, and it speaks clearly, it has three volumes. Um, and then the other images are um, the color mates. So you can identify clothing with tags. Um, and then there's at the bottom, there's a picture of like the different um, safety pins that can help identify the different clothes. Um, and Kelly also said to clip matching sets together. <laughs> That's helpful. Um, if you kind of have those already identified, you know they match and it's easier to dress and change. Kelly said it was fun for her to use FaceTime to call family and ask if her kids were dressed appropriately with the colors matching and stuff too, <laughs> which I think is cute because then once my kids wanted to dress themselves, like they, nothing matched, but <laughs> When you're when you're in charge of dressing them, these are some great options. Yes. <laughs> a little bit about bathing and cleaning. Um, we did not use traditional changing table for my kids. Um, we used a surface that was the right height for me, um, and put a changing um, pad on it. Um, and there's a picture here of a person in a wheelchair pulled up under. It looks like a desk to me with a changing pad on it because that's the right height for them um, to be changing their baby. So just get the height and surface that you need and then put a changing pad on it. Um, and our coworker, Teresa said this um, hair tie on wipes hack worked awesome for her mom. Um, I wish I had known about this too. Uh, if you, when you're pulling wipes out, it can be very, well, sometimes you're deep in poop and it can be, difficult to get a wipe and not get the whole bag of wipes. Um, so when you put a hair tie around the egg, edge of the wipes, it creates just enough um, kind of restriction so that you're just pulling out one wipe at a time. You don't end up with that whole string of wipes coming out. Um, something that my friends in the disability community taught me out too are bidets. Um, they are super helpful in a pandemic when you can't access toilet paper, but they're also really great for potty training. Um, having your kids learn that they can turn on a bidet and it can wash off their bottom or at least get the start of a wash off their bottom, especially if it's hard for you and them to reach and wipe. Um, they are, we, we are doing potty training right now. Um, and 
Um, they are really helpful. Uh, once you get past any, I do, one of my kids is anxious, so is about the water shooting out at them. Another quote from our coworker Kelly is, you're just gonna use a lot of washcloths or wipes. Um, as a person who, who has low vision, she just said, like, I just kept wiping and wiping because um, I couldn't tell for sure otherwise that the baby's bottom got clean. Um, one thing with bathing and cleaning is that you can um, have a rolling bassinet with a towel in it. Um, so if you're moving the baby from like the tub to the rest of the house, um, or if you're bathing them in um, your kitchen sink, putting them um, in a warm towel in a rolling bassinet to move them um, to the next room can be um, safer and helpful. Um, and then Kelly said she also used FaceTime for visual concerns like diaper rash. Um, like, did she get everything cleaned up and how, how is their butt skin looking? We have some more uh, bathing and cleaning options here. Um, this is called a summer comfort height bathtub in the lower left. Um, and we do have those available for borrowing for demo and short term loans. Um, it is a way for having a, a baby bathtub that um, sits up higher um, in your tub, or you can adjust it and, and use it other places too, but that might give you the extra height you need so that it's um, not bending down in, into a tub to wash your baby. Um, and there's also also the four moms clean water bathtub. Um, this can be attached into the kitchen sink and it can also go into the bathtub. It has a thermometer, um, digital thermometer already on the bathtub, so that's helpful. And then it has a spout that pretty much um, drains the water as you're um, filling it. So then that way um, you can prevent from overflow. And um, it grows with babies. So it has an infant, um, like a sheet, like infant placeholder. Um, then you can take that out as the baby grows. And then as the baby grows again, you can put it in the regular bathtub. Um, and then there's also an image of a sink extender um, that is useful to put just on a regular sink. Um, sometimes with my kiddos, if they, um, even though we have a stool, my daughter still can't reach to get into the water. So sometimes she will fall in or, or she'll just kind of get water like all over the place or all over her clothes trying to reach um, the water. So the sink, sink extender um, helps to kind of bring the water out closer to her. I will say my kids um, use those to fling water. Um, like if you can see, it's like a flap that comes out under the sink. And if you hit it, it will flip the water all over the bathroom. Um, so it is useful and it, is, it can become quite a, a water geyser maker. <laughs> Maybe your kids are more obedient. <laughs> mine off <laughs> a little bit about sleeping and monitoring i'm going to show a video um, in a second but i wanted to go over some of um uh the sleeping and monitoring devices we have pictured here and the bottom left is what is called the pedia lift and it is a crib that opens on the sides and the crib itself goes up and down so you can raise it to the height that works for you um, we also have available uh, for demo um, a wireless monitor smartwatch with vibration alerts. So if you are deaf um, or hard of hearing, the watch vibrates if your baby is crying or making a noise. Um, there are also monitors that have um, flashing lights if your baby is crying. So there's lots of different ways to be able to check on your baby. Um, and then pictured here is also a co-sleeper. Um, there are several designs of those. Um, it's a bedside bassinet. You can have it so it is up on top of the edge of your bed or flush with it. Um, and there's a picture on the top right of it on top of the bed. And then on the bottom right, it's flush with it. And I'm going to um, stop and share tips for nighttime with a newborn video. Uh, this is Kara Ayers. Um, she is a person with um, osteogenesis imperfecta, and she is also a PhD psychologist, and she's founder of 
the Disabled Parenting Project. And I thought her tips for bedtime with a newborn were great. So let's see. Is that showing up? Yeah, okay. Hi, I'm Kara and this is Riley and she's seven weeks old. And I wanted to share a few tips that I've found to make um, nighttime life with a newborn a little bit easier. So my husband and I uh, both use wheelchairs and while we can transfer pretty easily, it's always easier if we have most everything that we need here at night um, in or around the bed because her she's pretty urgent at night like most newborns are. So our first tip would be um, we love this co-sleeper. It's by arm's reach and so it can connect to the bed or roll up right next to it and you can um, adjust the height here to make it as even as possible. And it also has different pockets around so I stick an extra sleeper in the back in case um, she messes hers up or um, burp claws or things like that. So there's also pockets to make it easy. So Riley, Riley can sleep over there safely, but she's really close to me, so I don't have to get out of bed to get her. Uh, the second kind of gadget that we find that makes it easier is the bottle warmer, which is back here on the nightstand. And so it has a cooler in the back and you can keep two bottles um, cool with some ice packs. And we've adjusted the ice packs that we use, um, the ones that came with it don't fit the bottle type that we have. So you can, kind of get creative with that and then you can just pop the bottle into the steamer and warm it up and so she can have her bottle quicker and, and also without having to get out of bed so I can kind of comfort her while, while the bottle's warming up. And then the last tip would be to have some type of diaper caddy fully stocked and ready to go um, here in bed so I keep it at the end of the bed. Um, I like this one which is actually not a diaper caddy, it's a toolbox um, by Craftsman and so it just has lots of pockets and it's sturdier um, so it doesn't kind of get knocked off or anything. And so I just keep diapers, wipes, um, anything that you might need, burp claws and lotion, just, just anything. And then this is another variety that we have that we keep in other parts of the house. It's just lighter and a little bit easier to move around. And last, kind of along with that, having everything that you might need is, I do try to keep the boppy, either at the bottom of the bed too, or, or hooked to the co-sleeper or something, uh, just as another option to position her while I might be getting some of these things ready. So. That's what we found. It helps us to have everything that we might need kind of in one central location during our nighttime parties with Riley. And we would love to hear your tips for how you find um, ways to make it work. So you can share your tips on our Facebook page, Disabled Parenting Project, or on our website. Thanks for watching. Love to hear if anyone else has any tips that they'd like to share. Um, you can unmute or put them in chat. All right, well, we can talk about medication and first aid then. <laughs> so, I will uh, change the screen share over. Some medication and first aid AT are talking thermometers. Um, there are a bunch of different variations of talking thermometers. Um, there are no touch, um, travel size. Um, and then also the ones that go in your ear or go in your mouth. Um, there's a couple different variations, but for people that have low vision, um, for them to speak out loud what the temperature is, is some helpful AT. And then um, another helpful, um, some other helpful AT um, will be liquid level indicators. So there's me medicine spoons, medicine cups. Um, there's a say when liquid level indicator. Um, and that pretty much will um, say when in um, help you not overfill. Um, so you can put that on a medicine cup on a um, in the picture, there's an image of uh, coffee mugs. Um, so it'll help you not overfill the whatever type of um, dish or cup you have. 
um, and that is battery operated. Um, and then also Kelly mentioned that um, with her having low vision, she uses her finger to test correct level of medications. So she kind of just got good at knowing um, where we're at on her finger was the appropriate um, dosage to give to her children. Um, and then other medication in first aid AT would be a script talk. Um, that's a talking prescription label reader. Um, it is an app that you would have to download. It is available on Android or Apple. Um, it program you will program the sticker label and the script reader will tell you the label details. So um, the dosage amount, name of the um, prescription, um, warnings, doctor's name, all the label information would be read out loud. And then um, there's also, that's on the bottom right, the picture of the script, script reader um, in a prescription bottle on the script reader. And then next to that is the med center system. Um, that is a medicine organizer and a talking reminder clock. Um, that med the organizer will organize um, your prescriptions by day. Um, it will also, it has four compartments in each um, square that's in there. And um, it will organize by morning, noon, night, and evening um, by the date. And then uh, the talking alarm clock that is attached to it will remind you when to take those um, different medicines. <clears throat> Another tip that uh, we received is to purchase first aid kits um in case of mobility concerns cognitive disability and vision disability um so for whatever your needs are so kind of how i'm um, in the last video where they had their diaper bag kind of ready and set for what their needs are um to kind of create your own first aid kits for those type of concerns and needs to have those readily available um and then there's also appointment and medication reminder apps and calendars that you can download and telehealth supports for um, those virtual Zoom calls if you can't make it to the doctor right away. Um, there's also telehealth support. I also learned that Alexa can give some basic first aid tips too. So if you have questions about what to do with some basic first aid kits, like what do I do for a scrape or a burn, um, Alexa gives some pretty decent first aid information. So it's another good piece of AT. In some of our AT for um, car seats and travel, um, we do have a swivel car seat available to test out. Um, this car seat goes from newborn all the way to, I believe, six years old. Um, and it swivels to be able to help you um, move your child from the um, forward facing or back facing um, position outward um, to the car door so that you can easily take Grab, I'm sorry, grab the baby out of the car. And that's especially helpful when they're newborns, when they're toddlers as well. So you don't have to um, reach over. And um, if you just swivel it around towards you, it's just easier to unbuckle and um, grab them directly out. And also if you have, if you're in a chair um, and you can adjust the height and um, of your chair and then grab the baby directly out. Speaking of buckles. <laughs> Speaking of buckles, <laughs> um, this is called an unbuckle me. Um, and it is a AT device that is used to help push in that buckle that is on the car seats. That is so hard to push in um, for the kids, for us. <laughs> so with the unbuckle, you pretty much will just take the device and um, lift it and slide it onto that buckle. And then you'll pinch it down and then it will snap and release the buckle. And we have these available to, to try out. <laughs> we do. Um, and uh, so also um, some things that we got for parenting hacks and just different parenting tips um, is to create your own low stroller. So um, when this person created this low stroller, Silas in the picture here, <laughs> not a baby anymore. Um, he, um, they, there wasn't really any options available for low strollers um, that little, that someone that is a little person could see over. Um, so they, 
um, created their own low stroller by putting an infant booster seat on to a dolly and they would use that to roll the baby from room to room in their home. Um, now there are a couple of different um, strollers that have adjustable height handles. Um, the Duna stroller that's on the left, um, that is actually a multi-purpose stroller that goes directly from car seat and folds out into the stroller. So you wouldn't need two different things, it's just all in one. And then that is actually as low as 33 inches um, and um, can adjust to, for taller people or average size people or can um, be as low as 33 inches for, um, little, for a little person. And then the Bugaboo stroller, um, that is also a lightweight stroller that, is a, that has adjustable handles as well. Um, some other AT that is um, very helpful is uh, baby wearing and using carriers. Um, there's a lot of different types of um, carriers that can be used um, for baby wearing. In this slide, there these are wraps and slings. So the picture to the right is of a, a person with low vision um, that has a wrap on with their baby and they're holding their um, daughter's hand. So with the wraps, um, they're more of a stretchier fa fabric <laughs> that can be wrapped around um, your shoulders and your torso um, to be able to connect the baby. And those are, I believe they're a little bit more helpful for newborns, um, kind of give you that more snug feeling. Um, the wraps, I, I wouldn't necessarily use them for when the baby starts to move so much because they will just, with the baby moving so much, they just will start coming undone. Um, the slings as well, those are great for newborns. They almost give you that womb type feeling. Um, the picture on the left of the mom holding the baby in the sling. Um, it's like almost just really cuddled, snuggled <laughs> next to mom. Um, and on the next slide. These are also different um, baby wearing carriers. So there's a hybrid carrier. Um, that's a wrap in a sling kind of um, mix. No, actually, I'm sorry. It's, it's a wrap in a structured carrier kind of mixed um, in one. So um, it's like a, it has loose fabric, but then it also has like a more softer structure to it. So that kind of is helpful for um, those, for a, older baby um, that is moving a little bit, but then you also get the feel of a wrap um, and not the structure carrier that has the straps like a backpack. Um, some people that's uncomfortable to put around their arms um, in their body. And then you do, with all of these carriers, you it's really helpful to be able to try them out. Or if they're gifted to you, you know, if you have them on your registry, it's kind of different to be able to use something and then you go out and purchase something that may work differently. But when you're purchasing all these different items on your own and you're not sure like which one really will fit, the carriers are really something that um, you have to really figure out what adjusts to your body size, your baby size. You know, it's, it's hard to, predict that before you have the baby on what carrier would really work for you. Um, and then there, with other structure carriers, um, there's a tush baby hip seat baby carrier. And so that has like an, a seat on your hip to be able to place the baby on your hip and it takes that weight off of your hip. I don't know about you, Asian, but I think I tried four carriers before I found one that didn't really hurt my arthritis in my shoulders. Yes and that fit my body. Yeah. Um, so, um, but also you need an actual baby to know if it's gonna work. Exactly, <laughs> it was so hard to, even when we were looking to register, like it was like, yeah. I don't know what will work. And, yeah. and different things work different with my daughter than my son too, just yeah. depending on if they move more. But um, I will say, at least for my shoulder arthritis, like the Lilla baby carrier, um, the straps did not, 
dig into where my arthritis hits, but like baby Bjorn totally hurt. Um, so you really, um, there, at least in West Michigan, there's some baby wearing, baby wearing groups where you can try, um, different kinds of baby wearing carriers, um, too. So you might want to check with your local community if there's a lending library of baby carriers. Um, we certainly, um, want to be able to provide and, and have, um, those available but just know that there are dozens of kinds and it's yeah. really hard. You can't really tell um, when you're pregnant if it's gonna work uh, for you um, unless like, you, like, yeah, you have to try them and you have to try them with an infant and with your body the way your body is. So um, definitely keep your receipts and, and check out options in your area and let us know if you'd like to try some um, to see if they work for you too. Another thing to keep in mind is the fabric and the way that um, they are made. Mm -hmm. um, some, of, some of them, some carriers are um, temperature controlled. So that's very helpful if yeah. um, your mom tends to get hot easily um, to even keep that in mind when you're searching for one. Um, they do have those options available too. more pictures of the same. Yeah. yeah. Um, about mental health. So mental health apps um, are very um, helpful AT. Um, they can assist with mental wellness and self-care. Um, they can help reduce anxiety and stress, learn, help you learn and practice coping skills track your moods and symptoms. Um, there's virtual companion apps, um, therapy um, apps, and also coaching apps um, with some PTSD support. Um, <clears throat> mental health apps can also give you access to community and support groups. And then there's also apps that are available to um, provide organizing of lists and reminders. I think um, as someone who has PTSD, um, PTSD coach was really helpful for me when I was pregnant. Um, some of my trauma history is medical related and then there's so much medical involvement when you're pregnant and I had complex pregnancies and multiple losses. So um, be happy to demonstrate apps uh, for you if, if you're interested in apps um, that help with mental health, whether you're pregnant or not. But um, I think that um, I, I also had um, perinatal anxiety and depression. So I had that while I was pregnant. Um, and then after too, and I think too, as someone who had multiple losses and very much wanted to be pregnant, it was surprising to me how depressed and anxious I could be. Well, the anxiety wasn't surprising because I had so much loss, but I was very depressed while I was pregnant. Um, but I very much wanted to be pregnant. So that was, I think, even harder to deal with depression. Um, because I, I had a baby in a pregnancy that was I mean, I did get to have the babies. Um, so apps and supports for perinatal mood, um, we'd be happy to demonstrate those and um, ways of feeling not alone and of accessing support were really important for me in, in my pregnancies. And this is just a slide, just um, some of the mental health apps, um, just to kind of give a overall view of like what some of them have to offer. So the Calm app, um, they, they do like a check-in um, daily. Um, how are you feeling? They help you with meditation. Um, then there's a Mood Fit app and that's kind of like an overall mental wellness. So um, they have check-ins, journaling, um, mood trackers, um, all of that type of stuff in, inside of that app. And then the Todoist app, that is a very extensive <laughs> reminder and task list um, creator. Um, and that's on the bottom right, where you can kind of check off things that you've done um, and create those reminders of your everyday to-do list. Um, I do think that lists and tracking um, with parenting are very helpful. Sometimes they even help my kids. Um, when I have things on the calendar and they already know kind of like what the plan is for the day, I just get a little bit less 
of a um, fight <laughs> to move on to the next task or to even go um, to our after school activities or whatever else is going on. You know, they kind of, they, they're they very into days of the week. Oh, it's Wednesday, we have soccer. Oh, it's Thursday, we have this, you know? So it's, I think the um, lists and organizing and calendar reminders are very helpful with the kids and the family as well. And these are some of our um, sensory supports. Um, we have a weighted blanket, sensory swings, and hammock chairs um, available for demonstration. Um, and sensory supports are um, different AT devices that can help with self-regulation um, for children. Um, and some of and our kids use these devices um, as well. I did use a weighted blanket when I was pregnant. Um, we have those available to try. I also got super hot when I was pregnant. So it was balancing. Um, it caused me to be way too hot, but it also helped with calming. So that's something you might want to try before you invest in it. And we have this hammock chair that's pictured upstairs in our house. And I, I love it. And the kids love it for that self-regulation. Um, other devices for sensory supports are fidget spinners, fidget blocks, and poppets. Um, these are devices that can kind of help if you have fiddlers. Um, it, um, I am also a person that has to um, fidget to focus. Um, so fidget spinners and fidget blocks help me. Um, my kids just kind of started using the poppets. I haven't really started doing that because sometimes the noise in itself, um, the fidget blocks and the um, spinners are a little bit more um, relaxing for me. They don't make that much noise, but the pop it, the pop noise after a while <laughs> doesn't really help me relax. I was going to show one of my spinners actually too. Um, I, I had real anxiety when I was pregnant. So this something to watch visually while it spins was really helpful to me. Um, other sensory supports will be noise canceling headphones um, to use electronic devices like your phone, iPad, or tablet. Um, and you can download sensory apps. Sometimes music, meditation, learning, and play can kind of distract you and help that self regulation as well. Um, if you have a go to app um, when you can tell your triggers, or um, if you see that you're getting overstimulated, sometimes being able to focus in. I know we try to. Um, limit our screen time, but iPads, phones, and tablets actually can help um, with moods and um, different sensory um, supports. I developed a playlist when I was pregnant that really helped me on Spotify, that really helped with um, anxiety. We do have other resources that are listed at the end of the um, resource guide. Um, those type of resources are um, anything to do with um, from legal supports, legal help for um, parents with disabilities, um, and then also um, funding resources on how to where to um, buy, resell um, different items, um, and in those resale items more at a discounted price um, with with kids, sometimes we grow out of things fast or something doesn't get used um, to be able to resell those different um, sales. Um, and then the Disabled Parenting Project, they have a blog and also a community group. Um, and those are all parents with disabilities giving different advice, tips. Um, the video that we showed that was from the Disabled Parenting Project. Um, and then also there's other, there's pregnancy supports in our resource document and am I missing anything? Um, preschool and um, supports for schooling. Um, Just, oh, it's the, the legal, su the legal yeah. support for the state of Michigan is Disability Rights Michigan. And it is true we as people with disabilities are far more likely to have our legal rights um, challenged um, and to, um, be thought of as not capable of parenting um, and to have um, people report or, or um, have concerns about us as parents. So uh, Disability Rights Michigan, there's a link uh, to that is the legal support provider for parenting with a disability in Michigan. Um, if you should run into any of that ableist discrimination against you as a parent. 
And we do want to thank everyone for joining us today. And if you could just take some time to fill out a quick survey, um, I will put that link in the chat. Um, we would really appreciate it. Thanks everyone. Um, we yeah. hope that we gave you some does good anyone, ideas. Yeah. yeah, does anyone have any questions? In the, no. I don't have questions, but thank you. Uh, I enjoyed the all the pictures. It was nice to see what's available. I I'm far from having a baby. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like closer to having a grandchild probably than a baby. Right. But it's really nice to know it's out there because you don't even know what you don't know. Mm -hmm. And then when you have somebody who's struggling, it's nice to know that these things are available and that you have a lot of these things that people can try out. And Carrie, also, these items um, are for grandparents as well. <laughs> oh, really okay. will be I have a, let me, re I'll rephrase it. I have a 17 year old and a 19 year old. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm just saying I'm closer to the day. Right, we're not right. there yet. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I hope not. But we should say kinship care too is a real thing. And yeah, so if you are a grandparent with a, a grandchild you're caring for, yeah. there's some great options for that too. Good clarification. Uh, I had parents really late, so I am not close to being a grandparent, but um, uh, these items are great for all different kinds of um, parenting. Yep. Thanks, Carrie. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, we will be um, sending out the resource link um, too, and we do appreciate if you take our survey. And again, thank you for your time and thanks to those that joined on Facebook. Um, if you have more AT that you suggest that we have, or if you know people that would like to try these devices, please definitely, or if you yourself would, give us a call or email. Uh, we are here to help, we're happy to help. Um, we wanna support other parents like us, parents with disabilities. So thanks everyone, take care. Thank you everyone.